Hi everyone, how you doing? Dan here. Today I thought we'd get outside again because it's such a lovely nice morning outside. Um, so we're back at Ivy Green but we're not hunting for a kingfisher today. If you didn't see that video, make sure to check it out on my YouTube channel. But today we're here with the Mini 2 and I thought we'd go over five quick tips to make your drone images look that little bit better. They're really quick and easy to follow. Right, let's get straight into it. So we've got the Mini 2 here, what we're going to take off. I found a nice bit of flat land here um, and we're going to send it up and I'm going to record the screen on my phone. And then we're going to go over for five quick tips to get better drone images on the Mini 2. Alright, here we go. Take off precaution, what have we got? No GPS signal, we'll just wait for that to connect in. We don't want any flyaways this morning. So step number one to making your images look better is to make sure you're shooting in RAW. So this just allows you to edit with more data when you actually get to post-production. If you shoot just a JPEG, you're very limited to the amount of colour correction and colour grading you can do. But if you change it to DNG, you can really get in there and really mess around with the fine details. So to do this one, just press the um, three dots at the top there, click on that, and head across the camera at the top. And then your very top one is Format JPEG and JPEG RAW. Unfortunately, you can't turn the option to shoot JPEG off, um, but this way I just delete all the JPEGs on my computer and then I've got all the raw DNG files to mess around with. So that's tip number one to make your images look a little bit better. Just whilst we're on this screen as well, if you keep your size at 4.3, that actually uses a full sensor for drone so you can crop a little bit better in post-production as well. If you shoot 16.9 and then you need to crop, you're already losing resolution. So it's better just to shoot with a full sensor and then crop in post if you need to. So tip number two is make sure you've got a manual white balance. Now this doesn't matter too much if you're shooting the DNG RAW files, but it is definitely a good habit to get into, especially if you're shooting video with a drone as well. Because if you shoot the video and you've got the wrong white balance, there's very little you can do about it there. But if you get in this habit of just continuously doing this, every time you come out, your videos will all be perfectly white balanced. Now the problem with automatic white balance on the Mini 2 can constantly fluctuate very minutely, but it's what this means is what you've not got a standard white balance throughout the entire video clip. And when you come to colour correction, this can be a little bit difficult to actually work it out and you know get into the fine details and balance all the colours out perfectly. So to do this, as a quick tip, to pick the drone up before you start flying. And where it says white balance on the screen, see, you can see I've got mine in manual, but if you tap auto, but if you point the drone at the sky, tap auto, you'll notice what the white balance has changed. But if you tap manual, it's going to keep it to where that white balance was. So we're shooting at 5,500 Kelvin now, and that's pretty much perfect for where we are at the moment. I'm just going to make sure the camera's still recording. That's going to be my worst nightmare, getting home and not having any footage <laughs> again. That's pretty good for tip one and two. We don't even need to take off before having a look at them. So next three tips, we're going to have to get the drone up in the sky. So let's do that. Such a lovely morning. I mean, it's chilly, but it's nice. Is that going to do it? Yeah. All right, let's get up. There we go. Right, so if we go just to the right over here where the sun is, we've got the river. So let's head over there. It's in my line of sight. This is really good with this field. You can just pretty much see for miles. It's so, so good. Right, so, oh my God, look at that shot now on my screen. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm Just whilst I'm up here, I'm going to have to record that shot because it's looking absolutely amazing but <laughs> i've not got my nd filters on today because i'm shooting photography and that was going to be one of my tips but um, it's worth getting this shot with a high shot speed because that is just absolutely stunning look at that i get so excited when i see drone shots like this it's just absolutely incredible wow look at all that fog i mean sorry guys i know this is a photography video so i'll get back onto that in a sec let me just get a nice Swooping shot. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. let's just slow that down. Wow. Every time I come, I think, oh my god, this is the best shot I've ever got in my life, and then something like this happens. I mean, look at that. Look at the fog. Oh my god, it's so good. Just a shame I'm at shutter 1250, so the video is definitely not going to look too cinematic. But anyway, look at that. Right, as we're here, I'm going to stop recording. And I'm going to let you know tip number one. Now, tip number one would be to never shoot directly towards the sun because it's just going to massively blow out. And because there's not much dynamic range on the camera, it's quite hard to get a decent shot of the blacks and the highlights. Um, I am going to shoot towards the sun with this shot because it's looking quite good. And I'm fine with that um, foreground exposure being a little bit darker. So it's what you can do here. If you do want to shoot in the sun 
I'd recommend highlighting either the sun or the foreground. So you either have a blown out sky and have the ground exposed or you have it the other way around where the ground is totally underexposed um, giving like a nice silhouette um, because otherwise it's going to be quite difficult to expose both. Um, so tip number one is try and avoid shooting towards the sun if you can. Now tip number two is if you do need to shoot towards the sun, well actually this is tip number four now, um, tip number four would be if you do need to shoot towards the sun um, I'd turn on AEB mode which is automatic exposure bracket. So if you just tap on this um, on your photo icon up here and where it says single if you go down to AEB is what that's going to do is take three images one overexposed one underexposed and one just like kind of in the middle and it gives you a little bit more data to play with um, it's really really useful and when you come to post-production you can merge all these images together to get a high dynamic range image which I do on pretty much every image I shoot but is what you can do is you can take the images like this now having three stops of um, dynamic range is great but you could have nine I think you can even have I think you can have even more actually. So it's what you can do is if you go in auto mode for shooting pictures um, and then if you go to your EV which is your exposure value and as you can see mine's on plus 0.7 at the moment but it's what you can do is you can go all the way up to plus 3. Now plus 3 is too much so we'll go to plus 2.3. We're going to go back to single mode and we're going to go we're going to take a picture. Now this is going to allow us to capture all the really, really dark bits of the scene. Then we're going to go down to exposure 1.7, do the same again. Then we're going to go down to exposure 1. Point, uh, we'll go to 1. So we'll just miss one out every time. So as you can see, we've already got three stops of the higher values. And then we're going to go and get three stops of the lower values. So this is going to give us a super dynamic range image. We're probably going to be looking at about nine images to stitch together in post to really get all that data out. It's going to look awesome. So as you can see, my sun's still a little bit blown out here. But I'm getting closer and closer to where everything's looking quite nice. So let's just go down to minus two. I think that's the last one we're going to need. But So we just captured so much detail here. In all honesty, I'd use automatic exposure bracketing on any image, regardless if you know you're shooting towards the sun or not. You're going to be you're pretty much guaranteed to end up with a much better image out of the drone. So, just for example, if we turn away here and start shooting towards Sail Water Park, like, look at that again. Such a lovely image. Um, so, I'll just take an automatic exposure bracket images, and you can see we've not really got the um, massive difference in values the scene itself is quite exposed there's no massive extremes in this shot so that's why it's much better to shoot against the sun instead of into it um, but you know there are creative um, there are creative shots just like this one where you you know you have to shoot in the sun to get that really cool kind of look so this isn't saying don't shoot into the sun it's just saying if you can avoid it and shoot like with the sun that's much better to get nicely exposed images Better for exposure, but maybe not better for creativity. So something to bear in mind there. And my last tip is if you are shooting in manual mode instead of auto mode, which to be fair, I do normally. Um, but the tip here is to just to make sure your ISO is as low as possible to make sure there's no um, noise or grain in the image. Um, when you're shooting in daylight like this, you, you can be shooting at 100, absolutely no problem. And then this is different for video, but for photo, I'd get your shutter speed as high as possible unless you're doing a, something creative. Um, and the reason for this is just in case the drone moves a little bit, it'll allow it to keep a nice sharp image. If you're shooting at like one over 40, one over 50, one over 60, even though the drone is handling it quite well, it might have a slight wobble and then that motion blur and that shape will be in your final image. So if you can just shoot um, as high as you can to expose your image, like I'm shooting at one six forty for a second here and that's looking quite good. I mean, 1500 is looking good as well, and especially when it's in RAW and AEB mode. Just a quick recap before we go to the studio. Tip number one is make sure you're shooting RAW. Tip number two, make sure you've got a nice custom white balance. Tip number three, try not to shoot into the sun, but sometimes you might have a creative chance to do so. So just work out if you want to overexpose something or underexpose something to create a nice silhouette. Tip number four is to shoot HDR and automatic exposure brackets all the time. I would definitely never ever shoot a picture on the Mini 2 without that. And tip number five is just keep your shutter speed as high as possible to make sure you get rid of any motion blur. So let's get back to the studio and I'll show you how to do the HDR merge in Lightroom. Super quick and easy. I and mean, you'll all have some really nice, amazing drone images and I can't wait to see them. So if you do use any of these techniques, just make sure to send them over to me on Instagram and I'll check them out and definitely have a look at them. Thank you very much. Let's bring the drone back.
Hi everyone, so we're back in the studio now and I'm just going to quickly show you how to create your HDR images from the Mini 2 drone. Um, it's super easy to do and I'm also going to show you my workflow with my file management as well. So this is the folder with the images what we took before when we was out in the field. There's a super bright one, so I think that was a uh, 2.3 um, exposure value and then we went all the way down to minus 1.7. Um, so you see there's a huge range in um, exposure, so what we're going to mix together, we've got eight in total. Now you can do as many or as few as you want to make this work, but I felt like eight for this scene would be pretty decent. As I was saying earlier as well, you can't tell the Mini to just take DNG files, it always takes a JPEG as well. So I've just created a JPEG folder up here just to put all them in, because I don't really want them clogging up my Lightroom. So next we're going to open Lightroom, and then we're going to import these new images so let's um, do this so I'm doing this in Lightroom CC but you can do this in Lightroom Classic and Photoshop too and I'm sure there's many other apps you can um, do this HDR merging as well I think Luminar can do it as well and um, so we're just going to add the photos just going to quickly navigate to them here we are so HDR and it's just these ones here I'm just going to review for import and I'm just going to pop these into my folder for this morning which is the 3rd of March um, add eight photos so these are our eight images here now all we have to do is select them all right click photo merge and then HDR merge now Lightroom's just going to have a little think about what it's doing but it doesn't tend to take too long especially on the M1 Mac as well um, whilst it is doing the generating the preview just make sure you've got auto apply settings off because we want to apply the settings ourselves and just make sure auto align is on too so this just aligns the images if there's any slight variances in the position of each one which is especially great when we're using the drone um, so as you can see here the picture isn't looking you know too different to what you'd normally expect but there's so much data in this image now so when I hit merge and we start messing around with the settings no, so we'll slate merge, I'm rushing ahead. So as you can see now, as we start messing with the sliders, we can really, really play around with these values to the extremes. If we were doing this with a JPEG, we'd have absolutely no chance at recovering this amount of data. So as you see here, if we put the highlights down, we can really save the sky. And if we bring the shadows up as well, we can really bring down all the detail down below. And it's not making it grainy. There's so much, I mean, if we zoom in, it's so crystal clean just looking absolutely amazing so there's so much data here what we can work with and really really um, bring the colors out to exactly how we want them in the in the files not only can you mess around with the sliders to quite extremes you can also put some presets on so these are some of my favorite ones here I mean just clicking through these and because there's so much data these presets have so much uh, to work with like that one's looking absolutely amazing that one's looking really cool too that one's looking cool I mean you can get so many looks from just one image I quite like that one. But what else have we got? That's looking cool. That's looking really cool. A nice winter, really cold image. Um, I get quite opposite. That's like a almost like a desert kind of look. I really like the faded teal one here. I think that's really cool. And then I'm just going to tweak the settings a little bit. Yeah, bring the shadows up a bit. Bring the highlights down a bit more. Maybe get the vibrancy up just a tad. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking good to me, so we can just see the river here. So that's how you merge your images from your Mini 2 in Lightroom to create a nice high dynamic range image. As I was saying, you get so much data to play with. So I hope you've learned something from this video from either one or all five of the quick tips um, to make your images look a little bit better on the Mini 2 drone. I definitely think the HDR images and the automatic exposure bracketing method is great to get your images looking a lot better, a lot quicker. The other ones are kind of minor tweaks just to get you started in the right direction. But the HDR one, that, that gives you so much data to play around with when you come to edit. If you did like the video, please like, comment and subscribe. That would be great, thank you. I do greatly appreciate it. and It does mean the world to me when that happens. There's also going to be a few more videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you check them out too. But I'll see you in them videos. Cheers.